Okay, I'm going to show you a template which allows you to play the game of a hangman or a word guessing game on Genially. So I show you there are three different versions of it. Here's the first one. In this case, we've got letters down here and I can scroll through them and then I just click so D if I think it's that one or E. E is correct, but if I click F, I get the next bit of my, my gallows here. If I want to go to the end of the alphabet, I can quickly use the scroll bar to click on there. If I click the same letter again, it will also give me a message here already submitted. And if I if I lose, then I'll get the gallows here. So now I've lost. I didn't make it. And at the same time, I got the start again button. So I can click this and start again. So here's the second version. In this case, I've got a keyboard, an on-screen keyboard, so I can click the letters. Um, well, the house got split up a little bit, but here I've got the thumbs down because I lost and then I can restart. The third version uses a text box, so I can just type it in with my keyboard and I then get the gallows or I get the correct answer on here. The nice thing is if you've got the same letter several times then it would show it so like here the L just showed all the three L's here. Okay um, so I'm going to show you how to make it and also how to create a split up picture because this is what you need to make it appear bit by bit. Okay so here's my template um, the Minecraft one so I'm using the text box and if I get it wrong, then my sheep get eaten by wolves. Okay, so that's also one way of making kind of a gallows. Okay, so you will need the three temp well, one of the three templates here, these three uh, blue slides. So the first one is for the version where you scroll through the letters. The second one is for the keyboard. And the third one is with the text box where you can just type in the letter. None of them allow special letters, so don't don't use them in your text. Okay, let's start with the simplest one, I think, to make because it's the one with the text box. So all you need to do is just copy all these elements that are on the slide. And I go into my prepared picture slide here. So this is where I've already got my sheep and my wolf and so on. Okay, let's get started. So the first one the most important part is obviously our letters so I take this tiny little letter element and stick it underneath my prepared letter make sure the text box is a little bit bigger so it makes it easier to edit and then I just group them together so don't write out the whole word just write down the first letter and then you copy and paste I've got my second letter and now I can just change this a here so if you highlight it and then replace it. So let's say our word is ABC and just copy it. Oops, I copy and paste the whole lot again. Copy, paste, and I highlight the B and change it to a C and so on. And you spell out your whole letter. The great thing, it, it creates the lines itself. So here you can see the three lines are there automatically. And I can change the writing and the size of my letters. So in this case, I'm going with the computer writing but I could just uh, simply change it to, to any other font here. And the letters can even have different fonts and sizes. And you can change all this without having to ungroup it from the letters. Okay, uh, this little T we don't really need over here because we've got our own letters. Then we've got the green box, which is the, the winning one. So I want my next button here to appear once the players have won, so they can go to the next activity. And we've got the lost button. So as soon as they lose, I want them to get the message, all the sheep got eaten. And we've got a retry button, which is the purple one. So if they click on there, they can start again. So there are two different ways of using this. Either you show the retry button the whole time, so they can retry halfway through, or you can group this all together with the lost button which means only when they've lost, they can then try again. 
Then we've got the already used button. So this tiny one here needs to be grouped with some text message normally that tells the users that this has been used. So we group this together. This yellow box, just keep it in a corner, it's quite important. Then we've got our text field. And now we've got the potence button here, which means this needs to be grouped with the items that appear when the letters are wrong. So in my case, I want wolves to appear. So I group this with my wolf. And you can see at the moment it says zero. When I group it, it changes to X. So let's do a few copies, so copy and paste. In this case, I want them all to be identical. So the three wolves are going to eat the three sheep. And now I need to go out of the slide, go to a different slide and come back again. And now you can see that it has changed to zero, one and two. So this is important because this is the order in which they will appear. So zero is always the first one, then one, then two. And every time you group this code field with anything and ungroup it again, it will change the ordering. So I recommend don't mess around with it too much. Don't group and ungroup. In that case, it might be better to just delete the whole lot and start again. And always when you make changes, go out of the slide, come back in again to just check that the numbering is correct. Okay, so this is the one with the text field. If you want to use the one with the keyboard, you just use this template. So it works the same, except that you've got these buttons down here. They are they have all the letters on them. Um, in this case, they are in the French keyboard layout because it's made by a French team. But obviously you can move them around. So you could have them in alphabetical order if you wanted to. You could even make this into a unjumbling game, I guess, if you only give the letters that will be used in the word. Or you find a picture of a keyboard. But careful, these boxes will be see-through. So the players won't see the A, B, C. So you need to put something behind it. It could be just text or it could be yeah, a picture of a keyboard. So I could just put an A behind the A button and so on to show where they need to, where they need to click. I could just do it like this. Here we go. If you want to use the template where you can scroll through the letters, you need these three extra elements or four extra elements here. So you need the um, previous letter, the current letter and the next letter. And it's already given you the three letters here you can use. So you've got a slightly bigger one, a slightly smaller and two slightly smaller ones to make it clear that the middle one is the current one. Uh, you could change the, the font of them again if you wanted to, but they all need to be in bold. So just make sure all your letters are always bold. And all I need to do is just group them. So it can be any letter. In this case, it's just X. It doesn't really matter. It will work it out itself. And you can change the size of the scroll bar as well. Uh, it will make it a bit more precise if it's longer and makes it easier to scroll through. So again, I can't play test it because not everything is grouped together. And here I can show you what happens if I try. It actually shows you here a red text saying there is a problem with the one of the letters not being grouped because I've got my my T here not grouped. So it's quite good. It tells you what what is wrong as well. OK, now I'll show you how you can make a split up gallows or whatever the picture is that appears when the player loses. Because really what you want is to cut up your your hangman or whatever you're using into several bits. So if I move this around, you can see there are all these parts. So there's the gallows without a rope. There's one with a the rope. There's the podium and so on. And so they appear all bit by bit. So I show you how to do that. And I would recommend using PowerPoint for that because I don't think you can really do it on Genially. For that, you would need to find kind of lots of separate pictures. But if you want to cut up one picture, use PowerPoint. So let's say I want this little monster to appear bit by bit. So I want to make it a bit more kids friendly, maybe. 
just find a, a picture online and then you go to picture format and crop and you cut it to the bit that you want to appear first so here we go then i crop it and now i copy and paste this put it next to it and now i can just go to crop again and you see the whole picture is still there in the background and i just need to move it over so i go and i just line up my picture so it fits exactly onto this foot i've already cut out and i can cut it again and again copy paste crop and move to the next chunk um, oh, i can make this chunk a bit bigger so let's say i want the whole mouse to appear i can do that as well and so on and now you've got this whole picture cut up and i can now right click and save save as picture insert all these pictures into your genially like here and then you group them with the uh, potents um, code but make sure that they are in the right order so the feet need to be zero and one then the mouse needs to be two and so on 